and welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Today you find me at a top secret location. And that's because over the last year or so, you may have noticed me talking quite a lot about an online car auction platform called Collecting Cars. I actually appeared on the Collecting Cars podcast with Chris Harris last year. I've known the founder, Ed Lovett, for quite some time and he actually appeared on my podcast, Behind the Glass. And at one point in this summer, I was quite seriously bidding on a classic Alfa Romeo that came up for auction on the Collecting Cars site. Well, I've been speaking to Ed quite a lot and I'm super excited to say that we decided to partner up to allow me to film some of the cooler, quirkier and rarer cars coming up for auction on Collecting Cars. And we are kicking off this partnership in style because today I'm going to be filming one of the rarest, most exquisite McLaren, or well, Mercedes, Mercedes, it's a super rare, super amazing SLR and it's just over there. So let's go check it out. It started raining, it started raining. Oh, this car is far too valuable to leave the roof open when it starts raining. Oh, Semi-automatic roof closing for those of you interested. It gets to that point and then you do that and lock it in and then hold close. I mean, what is it with the UK? It's, it's bloody, well is it? No, it's not August anymore, it's September, but. I guess it's officially autumn. Also these doors, you have to really slam them. There we go. Yes, so SLR. Uh, let me take you back to the sort of late 90s, early noughties, when Mercedes-Benz were not only engine suppliers for the McLaren F1 team, but also major shareholders in the McLaren group. And in 1999, Mercedes-Benz unveiled a concept car at the Frankfurt Motor Show, which is kind of like a celebration of their iconic 50s race car, the 300 SLR, mm -hmm. but also sort of showed off a lot of the F1 tech they'd learned from their engine supply deal with McLaren F1. Well, that concept car was so popular that Mercedes-Benz went, heck, should we build this thing? And yes, the SLR road car that I think we now know and love was built. And despite the fact it has a Mercedes-Benz badge at the front and the name is officially the Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren, it was actually McLaren who built it. It was built at the brand new McLaren Technology Center. The car has fully carbon fiber body panels and is powered by a 5.4 litre supercharged V8 engine from AMG, which puts out in standard form 617 horsepower in 2003. When this car launched, that was insane. I mean, this is a hypercar of its day. And in fact, it came out at a similar time as the Enzo Ferrari and the Porsche Carrera GT. So naturally, journalists kind of compared all three. But I feel like that's where the misunderstanding around the SLR began because in my mind this thing is a hyper gt a bit like a bugatti veyron but because it kind of came out against the enzo and the carrera gt and all three could do over 200 miles an hour i think people assumed it was supposed to be this kind of track weapon especially with the mclaren name everywhere but no i don't think it I don't think it was ever supposed to be that. I don't know, we'd have to go and ask Mercedes or McLaren, wouldn't we? Now they did make a number of different versions of the SLR over its production cycle, because production ran from about 2003 to around 2009 or 2010. There was the Coupe, the Roadster, which this began its life as, the 722, which was a more powerful hardcore car, which kind of really celebrated the 1955 300 SLR, and even a 722S. But right at the end of production, well, actually, I think when production had actually ceased, McLaren launched McLaren Automotive, the company, which, of course, went on to give us the 12C and the P1 and, and all the cars that we now know of McLaren. And as part of McLaren Automotive, there was a division called MSO, McLaren Special Operations. And we, of course, know them as the team that do insane carbon fiber bodied centers and P1s and things like that. Well, MSO announced that they'd be doing a very exclusive upgrade package for the SLR for a small group of customers. And that is what this car is, a McLaren edition, an upgraded version from McLaren of the SLR. This isn't just any McLaren edition car. This is number one. Zero, zero, 001, the plaque is right there. This was the first car to get that treatment. It did start its life as a standard SLR Roadster. 350 grand they were, SLR Roadsters back in the day. The quite amazing thing is, this car's had one owner from new. So the guy bought the car and a couple of years later he went, you know what, I want to send it back to McLaren and I want to get all these upgrades. 
absolutely mad. But in a second, hopefully the rain will stop and I can jump out, show you all these upgrades, show you all these changes, and unbelievably, we're then gonna go for a little drive. I really hope the rain stops for that. We're gonna do this quick because I'm getting increasingly wet, but yes, a lot of bespoke components to show you on this car. Most noticeably, this front bumper, very different from a standard SLR. Looks like a real sort of underbite, like a huge chin at the front of the car. Very aggressive, very mean. Uh, lightweight 722 edition wheels. And then up here on this huge elongated bonnet, we've got these kind of like gills here on the wheel arches and then these amazing carbon fiber vents, all helping and aiding cooling of that huge, great supercharged engine. We're going to come back to this exhaust in a bit because that's a whole story in itself. Uh, you get these McLaren bespoke red McLaren badges, uh, carbon fibre wing mirrors, uh, obviously this lovely red roof. We're going to talk about the interior when we jump back inside and we're nice and dry. There you go, those lightweight alloy wheels again. Uh, tinted rear taillights, another lovely red McLaren badge on the back. Uh, this huge carbon fibre rear diffuser. And then there was some tweaking done to the suspension that was entirely revised for this car and the engine itself got a bespoke ECU tune. So this standard car, as I mentioned, 617 horsepower. The 722 edition took it up to around 640 horsepower. I've been told this bespoke tune by MSO is even more than that. I don't have a number, but it's apparently insanely impressive, which makes the fact that the ground is getting increasingly wet and slippery a little bit upsetting because yes, I am about to take this car for a drive and, and I really don't want to do anything wrong in it because as I say, not only is it so rare, but it's so damn valuable. Whoa. Those doors are so cool. Uh, anyway, I teased it just then, um, but in addition to the additional ECU tune power, uh, this car was also fitted with a completely bespoke and custom exhaust. When the customer dropped the car off with MSO, they said, look, we can fit the 722 edition exhaust if you want. Increases horsepower slightly, sounds pretty beefy. And he went, no, I, I want more than that. So yes, they created an entirely bespoke exhaust for this car. Are you getting the idea? This thing is so special. It's covered just 1,700 miles from you. I mean, pfft, and I'm about to drive it in the rain. Who is trusting me to do this? I do not know. Collecting cars, you're mad for arranging this. You're Because you're soon going to be auctioning a car that's upside down in its roof in bits. Is that still valuable? I doubt it. Uh, now, if you've never seen uh, how an SLR starts up, it's, it's a pretty cool, exciting moment. Uh, you turn the key around, turn ignition on, and then down here on the gear shift lever, it's a little sort of thing that you push up. It's a bit like, bit Lambo, bit sort of fighter jet, and there's your engine start button. So yes, are we ready for this? I'm not sure I am. Here we go. driven an SLR before, a standard coupe during Drive the World last year in Sweden. I've forgotten what a mad experience it is. It feels truly unique in here and truly special. Oh my God, this thing absolutely takes off. Whoa. Another thing I forgot is the brakes are a little bit odd. There's sort of nothing, nothing a lot. So you have to get used to really being able to stamp on that pedal when you need to. But whoa, this thing, I think, feels a lot faster than the standard car I drove. Oh, wow. And you're sort of sitting way back in the car. You've got that massive bonnet stretching out in front of you. The engine is actually just there. Whilst it looks like a kind of front engine car, it's definitely mid front. Such an exhilarating experience. Now, you might be thinking with all my references to the 722 edition, why wouldn't you just go and buy that instead of this McLaren edition car? Well, this is just so much more rare and so much more bespoke. Don't forget, they made 150 722 edition SLRs and 150 722 S's. On top of that, all of them had to be the matching specs. They were all identical. Was this completely unique and completely bespoke? Especially this interior, which I think is absolutely stunning. And then don't forget, we have theoretically got more power and more sound than a 722. Oh my God, this thing is just so fast oh. <laughs> oh my god I need to behave I honestly need to behave 
you know what I already said that this in my mind is a hyper GT something to do long distance miles in and, and it does feel like it would absolutely destroy any road trip it just wants to launch itself 300 miles down the road the thing is that five-speed box you can actually do the majority of your driving in kind of one gear oh. <laughs> That was a bit, that was a bit naughty. Sam, learn to behave. So, I don't want to go back, but I have to because I've already put too many miles in this car considering how few it had when I got in it this morning. It's time to turn around and drop this thing back, my God. I think what I love about the SLR is it feels like it really celebrates one of the most dominant partnerships in modern F1 history, Mercedes-Benz and McLaren in the late 90s and throughout the noughties, they were just winning everything. The Hakkinen Championships, all those Kimi Raikkonen near misses for the championship, and of course, Lewis Hamilton's championship in 2008. It feels like this car really celebrates that, and it's been so misunderstood, so undervalued, the SLR. And it's finally creeping back up, and I feel like it's only gonna continue to skyrocket as people appreciate it for what it is. I still think it looks fantastic. It looks relatively modern. It just feels so inherently special. It's definitely a poster hypercar from my youth. Not my youth, but my, my teenage years. And then this particular car just feels like the ultimate example. Not only has it got 1,700 miles on the clock, but one owner from new who's then kind of put on all the ultimate upgrades from factory. None of this is aftermarket. It's from McLaren themselves, and it's just totally unique, which makes it feel even more special than I think a standard SLR already does so i am massively grateful to collecting cars for allowing me the chance to come and check this thing out despite the damn british weather damn you because i would have i mean can you imagine this thing roof down <gasps> how insane must that be but yes if you're interested in checking out more about this car learning more about the incredible history the story of how the owner took it from new through the various upgrades to what you see now i'll put a link to the auction listing on the collecting car site below and I'm just going to sit here for a few more minutes just taking it all in because it's just one of those real pinch yourself moments. I don't get the chance to get up close to an SLR that often, but not one this rare. I mean, honestly, I, it's almost got a new car smell. Maybe I'm getting carried away, but it almost does. It's, everything is in perfect condition. So anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come. <laughs>